Hello everyone, in this uh, video we're going to see uh, if we can use a uh, delayed charge form to produce uh, sales backlog or pipeline revenue uh, or sales forecast or cash forecast uh, for a business. So when you click plus sign here, you will see delayed charge. Most of you may have, may have never noticed this. So here's a delayed charge. Uh, you would have to click it here, plus sign, delete charge. It's way down here, right after we've got invoice, sales receipt, delete charge. Let's click delete charge. Looking at this form, it looks exactly like your invoice or sales form, but uh, it's a non posting type. So you just create it, but you don't post anything. So now, we're trying to see if we can use this form to uh, produce uh, pipeline revenue, uh, do some forecasting for sales as well as cash. Uh, as you as you can see, there's no sales order module uh, in QuickBooks Online. There's nothing there, sales order stuff. So let's see if we can use this uh, Julia Charles sort of management tool to do some forecasting and uh, maintain some company backlog here so you know the the, the it, when you invoice it it's important but at the same time it's also equally important what's in the, what's in the pipeline for your company so let's get started and see how we can use this form okay it looks exactly like as i said uh like uh, your regular invoice form and let's say I want to create a couple of uh, delayed charge uh, forms here. Let's pick one at a time. Let's say, okay, here's a. I have a customer here. Uh, by the way, this example uh, is showing uh, we sell uh, cell phone, various cell phones like iPhone or Samsung. Okay, so here's the customer Dale, and in this case, delayed charge. We want to use when do you think you actually can build your customer. Let's say you can build this customer uh, in uh, in June. They say June 16. Okay. And uh, let's say the product line here is a uh, iPhone here. And let's say, well, they will buy two units. Two units on June 16th. That's it. This is save and new. And let's try another one. Let's say another customer here. And uh, in this case, this uh, customer most likely will buy this in, let's say, July, July, uh, July 3rd here. Let's say this guy, this customer is going to buy three units. Okay, let's try another one here, another customer. This customer, let's say, will buy in August. Let's say this customer is going to buy five. So we're just uh, forecasting here. Uh, we don't know they will actually buy it, but uh, you know, if you have the salespeople, you know, they will have... Uh, some idea when you get this business. So let's do another one. Let's say Intuit here. All right, so that should do it. So now let's go to the, uh, the reports here. The reports you want to look for is unbilled charges here. There's the report, standard report here. We'll say unbilled, unbilled charges. So let's type unbilled. You will see the report here, unbilled charges. 
So the report as it is right now, it looks like this, but this is not what you want. You will have to customize it. The first thing you want to do is the charge. So this is the charge type. So that's what you want to run and not time charge or some credit stuff there. So the first thing you want to do is click this customize button and we want to run the, under the list here transaction type is charge Here we go, charge. Okay, so now this is all we have in enter plus I have two already entered in here. So now as you can see here, uh, these are the uh, uh, unbuilt charges. That's what they call it here. But in this case, we're going to change this title and rename it as we want it here. So this tells you uh, the first one is on zone six. You think Dale will give you some business. And uh, something same here, another one here. There's a there's a problem with the pricing there. We just change this. We just say this is five forty nine ninety nine. Quantity two. Okay, save and close. Okay, so now, so still the report looks, it doesn't look too good as we look at it here. So what we want to do is we want to change this. Right now it's sorted by customer. And we want to change this by month. So sort by default here and change by, by month here. See group by right here, this one is by month. So now as you can see here, in June 2014, uh, it's showing you can bill this amount in here, and July this amount in here. So August you can bill this, and in September you can bill this. There's a problem with this one too. So the quantity is for, let's say, $649.99. So, so now you can see here, you can, you, you already have, uh, uh, unbuilt charges, like in June, you have this month, in July, August. So basically you already have, uh, uh, some sort of, uh, sales forecast done for the next four months, June, July, August, September. So let's customize this report to see if we can do this better. Okay, so let's customize this, and this is where you need to change columns. Okay, so we don't care about the transaction type, let's remove that one. And one thing we want is the uh, last modify, add in here. We want the client, add in here. And uh, we want the quantity, add in here. And we want rate add in here. So now we have to reshuffle, make ch change order, all these columns here. Let's say, what's the first thing you want to see? Let's say I want to see last modified up top here. Okay. And second is I want to see date in here. And the third thing I want to see is the client. Okay, and I'll see quantity up there. Let's just look at how it will look now. So as you can see here, the first thing you want is so this is the last modified. This is this is your entry date. If you it's not the uh, forecast date. This is like a forecast date, and this is your when you enter uh, your actual delayed charge form. 
So this is your last modified is when you enter it and this one you have to use it as your forecast date here. So on June 2nd you think you can build this customer. So now you got the uh, uh, the enter date here, forecast date, your client, customer, uh, quantity, rate, and this is the reference number. Let's move this uh, maybe uh, uh, over here or here even. Let's see if we can move this a little bit. Number. So the number, let's move up. Move anywhere you want it. So let's move here. Okay. Let's look at this report now. Well, that's looking good. So number is here, the client quantity rate. What on this posting yes or no? So let's remove that one. Posting remove gone. Okay. So looking good now. So here's the intro date. Here's your forecast date. Here's the reference number, invoice number, reference number, and here's your client uh, and the quantity. How, how many they're gonna buy, and the rate, and the memo. We can move any way we want it. Uh, change order, and the amount is right here. So just by looking at this, now you can tell uh, it, it's it's working. You know some sales forecast and cash forecast and also tell will also tell you your sales pipelines as of now you have about eleven thousand six hundred dollar worth of sales pipeline here or you can even call it sales backlog whatever you want to call it so pipeline revenue for future revenue is eleven six hundred dollars here so now you have to, you can change this unbuilt charges to any way you want it just rename it it's going here and uh, okay here's unbuilt charges let's so let's change this to sales backlog you can call it pipeline revenue right here okay so if you are doing uh uh sales forecast so here's your forecast for june right here so here is your forecast for july revenue forecast here is your revenue forecast for august now here is your revenue forecast for september so at least you have built uh four months worth of uh, revenue forecast you know if you, if you keep on entering it you'll have more but right now so there's a revenue basis here so if you're doing forecast this is a great tool uh, to use it. And uh, so uh, basically, so let's say you want to do cash forecast. How are you going to do the cash forecast from based on this information? So in July, for example, if you bill this customer, most likely they will pay you in July. In, I mean, in, if you build this in June, they will pay you in July if you, if you offer them net 30. So for the cash forecast for your July, here's your number right here. So one month after one month. So here's your cash forecast for August. So here's your cash forecast for September. Here's your cash forecast for October. Assuming they will pay uh, after 30 days. So, but still there's a basis for, for, for calculating your cash forecast here. So now, what else you can do with this report? At least you got something in going in here. Uh, so now you don't want to customize. You don't want to uh, customize this every month. So you can uh, memorize this report if you want it. So just click this one, and if, you, if everything looks good here, I think it looks good. Last modify is intro date. This is your forecast date. Here is your reference number. Here is your client and quantity you're gonna sell. So in this case, it will tell you how many units you're gonna sell each month now. So here's your rate, and here's your product, and your uh, amount, and the balance. If you don't need this balance, you can remove it. So let's customize, let's me memorize this report uh, for, for, uh, for future use. Let us call it right there, and add this as uh, 
uh, there's nothing in there so add uh, as uh, uh, let's call it pipeline call it pipeline revenue you can name any way you want it and you, you can save this report uh, to uh, to management or your uh, certain users here if you want it so just click it here so now this is your memorized report and you can run this report anytime you want it now so so let us go to reports and here's your custom report my custom report so here's your pipeline revenue so just click this one see right here so you got pipeline report built here so uh, and you can email this report any way you want it and you can convert to Excel that's pretty neat if you need to do a few other things based on this report uh, and uh, you can automatically uh, uh, email to uh, uh, actual users if you want to set it up that way so now what's next here uh, how about if uh, salespeople they can directly enter this form the problem is once you give give them access uh, you know they will have access to, to check around all these things so you can't just dedicate uh, designate users to the, to use this one so so that may work or that may not work depending on the your company situation so at least you can print this form you can just print this and give it to uh, the sales force or whoever involved with uh, dealing with clients they can just just fill this fill this form and and uh, send it back to you and someone has to manually enter it here so that will work too uh, so as I said uh, the, the, when you fill out this is the customer here and this one is the estimated date that you will bill your customer. Use it as not not inter date, not today's date. This is you want to use this as uh, when you're going to actually bill or estimated billing date in here. So uh, so that's that's about it on this one. So as you can see here, if you just keep doing it, I think uh, this this report looks good. Uh, although they just call it delayed SARS. You know it's a non-posting type but we're going to use this for pipeline revenue we're going to use this for sales forecast we're going to use this for cash forecast how cool is that so uh hopefully uh you know uh you will consider this delayed SAR form for your business and uh as always uh if you have any questions you can visit our website here newqbo.com it's right here newqbo.com and if you have any questions uh, you can ask you can ask uh, qbo.com forward slash ask right here newqbo.com forward slash ask thank you for watching bye